working, it's not working, it's that up. So the Google Glass is kind of cool. What it has is a little prism in front of my eye. And um, it's not booted up yet, but it will. And then what you gotta do is you gotta tilt your head up like that, turn it on. And this is how I record it. I go, okay, Glass, record a video. And I tap here, it's got a multi touch thing here. And I got it, now I'm extending the video, I think. Otherwise, it only lasts 10 seconds. Let's see. I'm doing like 9, 10 seconds. Is it going to stop? No, it's extended. Okay. So we're now, I'm actually recording video now through here. You can probably see yourselves if you look really close. <laughs> All right. So camera raw as a filter. Don't worry. I'm not going to do this, um, you know, the Google Glass for the whole presentation. I'm only going to look like a dork for about 5 or 10 minutes. So... <laughs> So one of the things that I really love here is let's open up this photograph here. And one of the cool things, notice I just double click, it goes in the camera roll just like before. And I'm going to zoom up here. Here's a photograph. And I'm going to do a little bit of retouching on here. So we're probably familiar with the spot tool, which would be the spot tool here. There it is, spot removal tool. And now Let's just start the very basic thing is if I just tap, it will automatically sample a section. Whereas in the past I had to, you know, create the spot and then I had to choose the area that was going to be uh, sampled. If you don't like the area, you can just hit the forward slash key and it will just start to sample different portions of the photograph until you get one that looks good. So it kind of works like the, um, you know, the, the spot tool inside of, uh, the spot healing tool inside of Photoshop. So it's just one tap, just like that. So I can go in here and I can just tap, 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 and I'm getting rid of the acne. Of course, I, hopefully my model doesn't watch this and hear me use the word acne. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I'm going to hit the space bar, but this is where it gets really good. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Let's zoom in to say 50%. And what I can do is I can actually click and drag on here and now it will actually create uh, these, these regions. I'm just going to hit the forward slash key. Yeah, that's a better place to sample from. See how it just will consistently jump around. Now, this doesn't look very realistic because it's too heavy. So we can take the opacity and pull the opacity back. See, like that? And then just kind of blend it in. So that's how it used to look. Pull in just a little bit just to soften those. So just much more natural to what the model looks like because these are looking a little bit more... Intense than her natural face does because I've got this beauty dish sitting about five feet away from her face with 500 watts of light going boof and sometimes that brings out a little bit more than what's natural. So as you know, the goal of good retouching is not to make everyone look like a plastic mannequin, but to make them look like the very best version of themselves or, or what they really look like. So make sure you're opening as an object and not as an image. And now we've got a smart object. There we go. And at that point, this is completely non-destructive. We can do whatever we want, double click, and then go back into Camera Raw and continue to make adjustments. So make sure you click on this little hyperlink at the bottom and turn on Open as a Smart Object. So that way we will uh, we'll get it doing that. All right, so that's just kind of using the spot healing. But let me show you something else with this. We can do it for a little bit more than that. Let's open this one up. And what we can do is we can get rid of power lines using the same tool. So here's the tip. What, what we're going to do is we can hit the left and the right bracket key to change the size of our, um, our sample. Or we can hit the control key and simply drag left or right. See that? Holding down control, I can change the size, but that way it's a much quicker way of working. And that would probably be, I would guess it's probably a right mouse drag on, on Windows. Uh, I don't use Windows, but I assume that control on Mac is the same as that on Windows. So what we can do is we can tap, and now if I hold down, the, I've taken my hands off everything, if I hold down the shift key, and then I click again, it'll draw a straight line between the two, and, uh, and you can see that it will just get rid of that, and of course we can resample different areas like that, or you can actually just grab it too, the other option is to grab this and move it around and say, hey, I want to sample here, or, or wherever you want to do it. So the other option we can do is we can go up here and then we can decide, hey, let's just do this one. So I'm going to hit the shift key again and drag there. And notice that we can clean that up. And then we can also drag it manually like that. So it's quite quick and easy to get rid of these kind of power line problems. See that? 
So right now I'm just doing a combination of the two, just clicking and dragging. And here's a little tip. Sometimes you have an area, if you have a big area here, let me just show you, and then you wanted to get in and do the sample, and you can't quite get at it. It's like, hey, I can't get at this. You have the option. You can move these out of the way like this. This is a tip in case you've been using it and you've run into this problem, which I had. And then you can actually just grab these other ones and then drag them back after you've, uh, after you've done that, if you want to get it out of the way just to work on it. You know, a couple more of the camera raw stuff because I know we've got, we don't have unlimited time. Um, so here's a shot that I did recently and I just want to, you know, I could play around with the color temperature, whatever, fix it. But all I want to do, this is unedited obviously. Um, I'm not going to edit it, but what I'm going to do is just want to show you this cool feature is, you know, if you want to add vignettes and stuff now, there's this thing called the radial filter. But if you hit the command key and you double click, it will create this to the actual document size. Or you can just go in and you can just click and drag to add this. And you can hold the space bar and you can move it around. So, yeah, I mean, you know, if we wanted, we could do it this way. Or we can invert it. Let me go here. Do it on the inside. So if you wanted to do the inside here, you could kind of have this spotlight effect. You can move around. So what I would want to do with this, though, is I'm going to use it for a vignette. So I'm just going to change the shape of it, just go around here, because there's a lot of distractions in this photograph that nobody really cares about. This is the subject here, so I'm going to choose the outside, and then I'm just going to drop it down. And if you're worried about the feathering, see the feathering here will enable us to just make it a little more subtle. But the great thing about this is it's all non-destructive. You know, this is not, you know, changing anything permanently in your photograph. So we can play around with it. Now it's more than a vignette because we can also do other things in here like change the color temperature. So sometimes you can do something like this. It's really cool. It's make the outside cool. So it's a little bit more creative. It gives you some creative options here to play around with. And then the thing is if you take this off and then you just make overall adjustments, it will adjust everything together. So if you watch this, see, this will adjust the entire photograph including our area. So I could play around, I could make that warmer, um, I could do different things and then just go back on here and then say, you know what, I want to change the outside of this area to something different, let's turn exposure down and it just gives you this kind of, it's fun to play around with. And of course the other option you can do is if you choose to do the inside rather than the outside, we just click here and then you can change your inside separately. And you just have this whole host of things to play around with. Like, you know, we've got clarity there. If we want to really make that pop, you know, we can do different things, fast shadows and highlights. And the other thing you can do too is you can add more than one. So we can add multiple ones in here. You know, if you wanted to do just, I don't know, weird things like make it look like we've got some colored lights going on in here or something, like some gelled lights or something, you know, you can play around. And if you want to get rid of it, hit the option key and just click on it. And I'll get rid of those. So <laughs> let me just jump in here quickly. And I'm just going to show you the other main thing in Camera Raw here is the, the upright filter. I'm going to show you this really quick. So this is kind of a nice way of being able to open directly from Photoshop too without having to go back into Bridge and then choose to open it. So this is cool for getting rid of perspective. There's certain types. It's a lens correction. It's under the manual correction. This is none. This is the automatic setting. And so that will automatically try to fix the keystone in. The other option here is we've got this one will straighten only. Notice that. Doesn't change any of the perspective, just does the straightening. This one here only does it up and down and doesn't change it across. And then the crazy one is here, is this full. It's almost like you reposition the camera at a different spot. Now, you can always change these two if you feel like, hey, it's not looking quite right. You can still change them after the fact in here. So this is the filter, you know, the take 10 pounds off anyone filter. <laughs> slide there. And so that's, that's basically, I mean, there's more things we could do, you know, vignetting and different things like that. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to show you that so we could be kind of done with some of these camera raw things. And then we'll come into some of the other features after the break. Thanks.